la baisse du cours de pétrole n'empêchera pas notre gouvernement de rétablir l'équilibre budgétaire en 2015. While so many other countries are still locked in deep deficits, Canada's net debt to GDP ratio is less than half that of the G7 average. It was not easy to return to a balanced budget. Budgets, after all, do not balance themselves. That requires a plan and the discipline to follow it. We did not accomplish it by raising taxes or slashing transfers to the provinces like our predecessors. To the contrary, we provided tax relief over 180 times since taking office. And federal support for Alberta is at an all-time high. Next year, Alberta will receive $5.2 billion in major transfers, a 145% increase over transfers under the former Liberal government. What is not growing is quoted Ottawa bureaucracy. Direct federal program spending has declined for the fourth year in a row. We controlled government spending, something that few countries have done in decades. And we've done it while maintaining the programs and services that Canadians rely on. As a result, we've provided even more support for hardworking Canadian families. I refer, of course, to our government's latest steps to put more money in the pockets of Canadian families, increasing the universal child care benefit from $100 to $160 a month for each child under the age of six, and providing parents $60 a month for children aged six through 17. Introducing the Family Tax Cut, a new non-refundable tax credit aimed at, ca at couples with minor children. It allows a spouse to effectively transfer up to $50,000 of taxable income to a spouse in lo a lower tax bracket with a maximum tax savings of $2,000. And finally, increasing the child care expense deduction limits by $1,000. Indeed, every family with children. All four men will benefit from these new measures to the tune of $1,140 on average next year. And I'm especially proud that a significant majority of the benefits will go to low and middle income Canadians and 25% to families earning less than $30,000 a year. We're cutting taxes for families for a simple reason. Across Canada, Canadians are telling us the same thing. The cost of living from groceries to hydro to housing is going up. We know that for a more affordable life, Canadians need a more affordable tax burden. And the fact is, according to a Fraser Institute report released last August, Canadians are paying, on average, about 42% of their income in taxes to all levels of government more than food, clothing, and lodging combined. Parents have a lot to pay for, children, sports, clothing, and much, much more. Our government believes in putting more money into the hands of those who care about their children the most, mom and dad. Our conservative government understands these basic truths. No government can tax its way to prosperity, and no government can indefinitely spend more than it earns. Higher debt means higher taxes and service cuts for our children and our grandchildren. We have a duty to manage our finances responsibly, and that is why we are focused on getting back to balance and staying there. Our government is delivering, and Prime Minister Harper is providing the serious leadership Canada needs in serious times. Now is not the time for risky experiments or a flighty trip back to discarded ideas and failed policies. Our government has a plan to meet our challenges, a plan that is working, and we need to stay the course. We survived the Great Recession. Now we will take the action necessary to secure prosperity for this generation and next. As we undertake this work, I look forward to working with this chamber and its members, energetic entrepreneurs who together are
are driving Canada forward to a bright future. I'm honored to be part of it. Thank you very much.